Good evening, good evening, good evening. I think everything should be good to go on my end. I think hopefully everybody is doing well tonight. Uh, this is, again, a last minute, as always. We're going to talk about the title, the topic at hand here, and it actually comes from, it was a last minute title, just because I had a conversation with somebody today, and no offense to that person at all, but I had to tell them they were living in a fantasy world if they thought reselling was the way they were telling me but anyway that's what led to today's topic um again that's life everything isn't as easy as everybody tells you it is and this surely is not um i, I want to discuss ours what i do and stuff like that just a little bit because that question has come up a lot um i like what i do so i don't mind putting a lot of hours in but let's just make sure sounds good thank you craven cards Hey, Brandon, how are you doing this evening? I do remember the Hawaii. I, I, that For some reason, the, the last name there always just shoots out Hawaii. Luanik, I'm sure I might have butchered that, but it just sounds like uh, a Hawaiian name to me. But maybe it's not. It just sounds that way. Hey, Charles, Mr. Lowe in the house. How are you doing? Quotidian. Quotidian. I'm not sure. I probably butchered that. Sorry again. I'm not the greatest on names used to take me forever to remember people in the restaurant I ran. I, I, there was a hundred and so on people, and I had a hardest time trying to remember everybody's name. Mr. Hale, how are you doing, Bob? Good to see you in-house. For those in Patreon, about an hour or so ago, I put up the second part to the military one, and you'll get to see some really neat photos. Um, if you're a, a military person, you'll probably recognize a few of the very well-known people in some of those images. Um, but the, I cover the rest of the paperwork in there, too. Um, records is the next one. It's I state that I think in there too, but uh, I should get to most not everybody Maybe I don't know. I've got a lot of uh, correspondence to deal with for patreon as well after the show I don't know how much I'll get to we we came back from Ann Arbor last night um, Anybody from the local area we had a big storm through the Detroit area and we got swamped We ended up pulling off the highway and going into a restaurant and ate for like an hour and a half till everything cleared and traffic was a nightmare I don't like going on the other side of Detroit truthfully, but just because of traffic I'm not a big fan of traffic, but you do what you do again It's not as easy as you always think it is and one little trip thought was gonna be a quick turnaround turned out to be hours on the road and anyway that seems to be what happens these days. Uh, Linda, how are you doing? Linda Wyatt, North Carolina. Been through there myself a couple of times. We've got a couple of cousins who live there. Again, Craven Cards. Thank you, Justin. Lovely day. New Hampshire. I've been through all of New England, like, when I was... Geez, our son was maybe a year or two old. My wife got to go up to... It was work-related, though, but still... In the life of reselling. Good evening, good evening. Roberta Hillslip Evans, how are you doing? How can we find you on Patreon? Um, there should be a link down in the on the description box as well, I think, in the... Um, well, it's not on this video since I can't post a uh, comment until it's done. But um, there should be one in the description box, I do believe. M most everyone has one. Um, hey, Mike, how you doing? Mike from Pittsburgh. Welcome back in the house there, Mike. Mike is the first person I ever chatted with on YouTube from this channel. Good to see him still around. I know he's beefed it up and passed the 10,000 mark quite some time ago at this point. Um, Antoinette Stanton, how are you doing? The Mac Daddy? Well, I wouldn't go that far. I am, I am, I uh, say, uh, people crack on me if I say it, but I am anal retentive on doing things a certain way and Details matter. I fly by the seat of my pants, but I'm learning to be better so I can do better. Again, flying by the seat of your pants, I that used to be me, but these days everything is planned out. I don't I do not do anything anymore unless it's planned out ahead of time. Sourcing or whatever we do, it's all planned out. I, I, I just ran into so many what-ifs when we were doing it that way, and I'd we wasted a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of drive time for one. Time is money in this, and, and the one thing that I don't have anywhere near enough I wish there was a cloning device but is um, time and I can I can never I never seem to get enough time I get an hour or two to do this thing and then it takes longer to set it up and blah 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 I ended up buying a new um, camera mount thing for some of the Weeble videos so we can 
anyway, I'm not going to get into details, but we're, I've got a gimbal and all that kind of stuff too for it. But everything takes way more time than I would hope. You know, even the simpleton stuff these days. Um, before I go any farther, I've had maybe a half a dozen people tell me, and I've, I've saved a couple screenshots. I didn't think to pull them up, but I, if, if need be, I can show them. But um, people complain that they weren't able to send offers to watchers at all. It was blocked. Every time they tried to do it, eBay couldn't figure it out. Well, that happened to us today for like most of the day, only on one PC. I've got an old one that we use. We were updating three from the Tuesday Microsoft update. So those were updating three of the laptops. Two or three other people were using a couple other ones. The wife had one, and so I was li limited to a couple. So I used one that we usually use for a server just to list a few things, and the same thing happened. It wouldn't allow me to um, send offers to watchers. It's, it's a hardware issue. It's got to be because it worked everywhere else other than the old one. So when that happened, I went ahead and opened up another one that we have that, that's an old version of Windows and the whole works. It's not a update one. And sure enough, the same thing happened with that. If you're having an issue where it won't allow you to send offers to watchers, I would seriously look at the hardware. If it's like 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 years old, I would seriously update whatever you're using, my opinion. But it only does that on the older ones we have here, two of them. One of them's already being updated, so it won't do that again. And the other one's just like a backup. I decided to keep it in the old uh, state so I can see if somebody else has a problem. I'll be able to say, hey, well, yeah, it's because of tech. I don't know what the, the story is, but it, the, the one that was doing it is one that was running the same uh, Windows 10 as um, it had been before. So it's not like out of day where we won't run Windows 10. I can tell you on Windows 11, none of that stuff happens. I've barely seen any type of it's not you, it's us on Windows 11. So maybe there's some IT-related issue to um, how that's working. That's, again, I have an IT degree, and that seems to be the only thing that maybe the, the one I'm using right the second that I also occasionally use to do eBay has all the bells and whistles on it, and it has the latest everything. It's got a mega, I don't know how many, um, maybe it's eight, um, I'm not going to get into it. It's not worth me going rambling on about what's, what's on the computer. But anyway, it, it's it's very advanced. It's got a lot of cores. I don't know, 8, 12 cores or something like that. It's one just for for um, graphics and stuff, basically. Um, Antiquarian Bookman, how are you doing? Good evening, good evening. I get a ton of questions on books in general. And I, I personally love books. The older, the better. The first foray into books for us, I used to, well, not the first foray, but the first most enjoyable aspect that I wish we could still do was I used to buy old ratted out, even leaflets from books and stuff, real early ones, like 1400s, 1500s um, in Mississippi. It's all gone. The, the antique store was wiped out years ago and on and on and on. But that I love that stuff because you get a stack sometimes from a defunct book. If the book's old enough, people will just buy it just because of the age. Everybody wants one from, you know, 1450 or a piece of paper framed on the wall and stating it's from this, it's from that. They always sold. I mean, and I always, like, 10 x my money on every single one of those. That's part of the reason why I still buy the old... I, I ran into some newspapers the other day, colonial newspapers, and I spent a little bit of money, but very reasonable considering that you can throw them up in the Rev War section on, on eBay and then flip them for two or three times easy quick um, times as a, a original one somebody will buy it they'll frame it with some other items or some family stuff that's from the Rev War era and that's usually what I see I've even sold some of those to like um, historical societies and like small town museums and stuff like that just because they'll again mount them on the wall a lot of what we sell the stuff like that's just like wall hangers but I don't care. I like it anyway. I don't know what everybody else does. But I, antiques, books, and stuff is really cool. Maps. I love maps. Um, Auction Monkey, good evening. Have Good to have you back in the house. Thanks for all of your support, Auction Monkey. I know you've done a lot in the past. So, Douglas Lockard, how are you doing? I try to do and give the best data that I can. Benjamin Adams, how are you doing? Good evening, good evening. Then we've got Dave, another uh, fellow YouTuber, Midwest Picker in the house. Hello, sir, back at you. Biff Bofo, how are you doing? Don's dose of reality. Let's just get into the topic for a minute here. Again, I, I 
I take occasionally, I, I talk to somebody, it'll be a friend of a friend or, hey, this, hey, that, can you look at her store, can you do this, can you do that? I don't mind helping somebody in, in a reasonable regard, but what I find far too often for those who just start off and just get into this is, is the same thing over and over and over again. It's constant. Um, is that, you know, this is a lot easier. It should be a lot easier because everybody else makes it seem like it's just the easiest thing in the world. And it, everybody who's done this for a couple of years knows that it's, it's not that way at all. Now, this is the part that lures people in. They'll find some cool stuff around the house for their first things to sell. They'll do really good at it. And then when it comes time to actually source and find stuff that you can turn around and resell and keep that going, keep that momentum going, you can't do it because you're new. You don't understand. You're not sure on this, that. You don't know what's worth the most money. And your your research skills aren't going to be as good as somebody who's been doing this for a while. I mean, I wasn't good at it when I first started. You know, so I knew certain areas and anything out of that, it, it took forever to look up that you couldn't even look it up the same way you do now. So, I mean, a lot of the features weren't even there. Some of the stuff you couldn't look up at all. So you had to just know it enough. So those who usually start off in the beginning, I hear that from constantly. It's just, I expected this to be a lot easier. And well, we were doing great with all this stuff from the house, their CDs, DVDs, all that stuff sells. But once it's gone, then what? So, I mean, it's a false sense of reality for a lot of people. And I don't mean this as an insult or anything else like that. It, it's the truth. And like, when you first start off, you need to work harder then than you ever have any, any, in any other time probably in your, your lifetime. You've got to be dedicated. You've got to sink as much labor, time, effort, knowledge as you can gain. I mean, there's a lot to it. And it, it's not just I find something and I just throw it up online. That, that's not a, a sustainable model. That's not a guarantee I'm going to get this amount of income every week or the sales are going to be routine, average, I do this every day, 750, 850, whatever it is, whatever your, your numbers happen to be, you're going to be level, you can project, you can predict what you're going to do, you know what you're going to do next month. I mean, that's, that's your goals. You can't, you can't just hope to find stuff every day without learning something new or trying something new or having some more knowledge to do it better. Like uh, some people just drive around and they'll just randomly source whatever they happen to find at a thrift store or something. I did that. Nowadays, we just target. I, do, I only go for certain things. I don't go anywhere unless I already know what I'm going to get when I go there. Usually like 99% of the time. Um, other than we did a few freelancing trying to find a table, which we're still trying to find a table to fit. You know. Anyway, I ramble on stuff like that. But the, the point, again, it, it just, it's not anywhere near as easy as they're, they're going to project it. A lot of people may do videos and all they show you is all this great stuff they always find. I show the better stuff. Most people don't care about the stuff that's only worth five or ten bucks. And I don't usually buy that kind of stuff in the first place. But, you know, the, the point is that the, the portrayal, even some extent, maybe people might think by me as well, too, of how easy this supposedly is. It's not true at all. It, it's literally a fantasy world if if that's what you think. You're not going to go out every day and find something worth a thousand bucks. It never happens to me, and I know what I'm doing. I've been doing this for, geez, going on, I don't know, 27 years or something, 30 years. I never know specifically value-wise, and I never expect to get a thousand dollars out of anything anymore these days. Um, it happens. It happens reg enough, at least, to say it's regular, but it's not routine. It's it's just not going to happen that way. You're not just going to walk out there and make a, a fortune. Again, don't be lulled in by the the initial success if you've got a bunch of stuff around the house. That's stuff that's been sitting there. It's not stuff you've sourced. It's stuff that's in your life that you're not using and that you're just recouping some money out of that and and that's not that's not reselling per se most of the people that i talk to their biggest problem is sourcing for me that's the least my, my biggest problem is time that's it that's all my if, if time wasn't a factor you know i could work 100 hours in one day man i would get a lot done but time's always a factor for me i don't i've got so much stuff i'll never get it up in my lifetime i would gather we even dumped some off the other day on a, on a another platform auction so if, if you're sourcing and, and you think it's just going to be out there, all that gold is there, it, it's, those times are long gone. Five, ten years ago, I could go, I'll give you a story. We were, we were in Maryland. There was um, Community Thrift. It was in, I think, Laurel, Maryland. It's off the Beltway, for those who know where I'm talking about. And I found it when I was delivering a route. I saw it. I made a mental note. The wife and I went back on our one day off, that one day off I had that week, 
and we found the little German manger figures, the sheep with the wooden legs, and everything that we found there was worth a lot of money. In that one trip, I mean, we walked out of there with like 27, and I'm, I'm giving you probably sale what we sold, actually made out of it, like $2,700 from that one trip to that one thrift store. And every time we went there, again, it's community thrift, I think. It's on the left side when you're heading um, south on the Beltway and you pass the Laurel exit there. I think you can see it from the exit, or you used to. I don't even know if that's there anymore. Somebody will probably shout that out, but... Um, we made like thousands every time we went there and it was just a given and there was other people but there was no mass quantity of resellers people used to make fun of us back then and mock us and all that kind of stuff that you're never gonna make you're never gonna do anything with that and I just figured it was just extra money and that's all we cared it was extra money it brought our quality of life up enough to where we made more money and we had a little bit of extra instead of you know blowing it all on car payments and you know rent back in those days in, a, in Washington it was expensive you know a small two bedroom was like three grand without utilities in, in DC if you, we could see the Potomac and all that but anyway it was I didn't like living there it was just a terrible experience but uh, we could always find stuff 15 years ago or better that was like a fantasy world and if I would have thought and not listened to people telling me I wasn't going to be able to do it I could have probably been 10 times better off right now than than you know I am now but again I assume that it wasn't possible it was a fantasy world now I'm not saying that you know anybody out there you know can't make it or, or won't make it if you're dedicated you got a passion about this that that's the biggest thing in my book Mr. Wonderful from Shark Tank he's one of the few that I do pay somewhat at least on his business stuff uh, pay attention to is he's straightforward I'd, I like I'd rather just somebody tell me you suck and you're done with it you should just give up I'd rather have somebody tell me that than to feed me anything because I'm pretty blunt and straightforward on it and, and I respect when someone does that I to just say what happened if I messed up I messed up and then move on that's your best bet with anything um, but one out of uh, three people is all that's going to make it working for themselves is the basic gist on something he said. And I've heard it from other people, too. It's not just him. And, you know, from the amount of people that I talk to, that's probably pretty darn close to the amount of people that are able to work for themselves. You know, when, when I first started, it's, it got too easy to sit down on the sofa for a minute with one of the kids or something and watch a movie that somebody had or something. And you waste a lot of time. You don't realize that, you know, you don't have a boss now. So you think, well, I'll just take a minute, I can do this, I can do that. But then you waste half the day and you're you're sitting at the end of the day thinking, why didn't I get everything done? I see that all the time too. And it, it's it's just not it's not as easy. It's it's just not how it's portrayed too often, like um pawn stars or something. They've got money, they've got expertise, whether it's a show or not. I know a lot of people watch it. I've seen many episodes myself. Um the point of it is, though, that, you know, they've got all this stuff. They, they don't have to worry if, you know, a $100,000 deal goes through, goes, you know, haywire and they lose a bunch of money. They, they've got coverage probably, maybe even insurance for all I know. But, um, again, there's, there's more to it. It's not that simple. And I've been doing this for a long time, so we're pretty established. We've got, you know, the ability to buy pretty much anything I want, you know, investment-wise or whatever, in cash, in in something I never would have thought before but it, again it, just having the money or this you've got to have the skills you've got to have the knowledge otherwise you're just you know shooting yourself in the foot you're just gonna be wasting it I, again it's not as easy everybody that I've talked to who's new you know in the last couple of years they've they've spent money good money on stuff that they shouldn't have again learning curve I did the same thing so the, the hardest time you're ever gonna have is when you're first starting off with this Again, don't take a 20-year, 25-year veterans or a 5- or 10-year veterans stake that it's going to be just like that for you because it's it's not. It wasn't for me and it wasn't for anybody else I've ever talked to. You're starting from ground zero. They're already or I'm already at, at a level that's above a lot of folks. And again, that's not meant as an insult. I've just done this so long. We've got a base of products up. The store I share, just just the store I share, has thirty over thirty thousand items in there now. We've been inching it up a little by little, but that all takes time. You know, that's the biggest thing. Again, everything for us is time. Time is the only thing that seems to be um, unmanageable for us because I, I can't control it. You know. So anyway, let, let's let's go back to the feed for a minute. If anybody's got any questions or anything, hang on. Let me pop back over here. Steve List, how are you doing? Hello from California. Well, hello from Ohio. 
Hey, Michelle, how are you doing this evening? If anyone was dumb enough to accidentally delete 200 listings, one ending and relisting, does anyone know uh, they can be retrieved? Um, I think... I'd have to think about that. I haven't checked on any of that in a while. You can go back to the Wayback Machine and probably get the titles... Yeah, that's one of my always things. I, I do it the same way when I'm ending and selling similar. I do it the same way every time because I was always afraid of that. I would have rather, I get the warning, hey, the duplicate listing, you know, I accidentally have tried twice. But before I ever delete, I like reload that page like twice sometimes. If I lose track, somebody asks me a question, I got a couple other people listing or something, I may be distracted when I'm doing, um, and I just did a quarter of our store the other day. I did 25% of our store, like 7,500 listings or something like that the other day all in one sitting so it can be like that i i want to say there is a way but i could be wrong um email me that michelle through patreon let me let me see if i can open up an ebay page real quick and because i think you can if i'm not mistaken but i could be wrong i might not be able to tell just because i don't have any deleted like that um Maybe if you go to ended, hang on, I'm letting it load here. Let me see. Maybe if you go to ended. Now, see, I delete all that. I, I don't think I could even tell until I, I run a couple end and sell similar. I can't do that for another day uh, if I had to. Just send me, a, drop me a message, Michelle, on that one. I'll see what I can look up on that one. Because now you got me wondering. I'm sure that question's come up before and maybe I've even missed it, but... Uh, just just drop me a note on that, Michelle. Um, Doug, unless somebody answers it in the feed. No, yeah. Douglas Lockhart, how are you doing? You have a ton of World War II pictures. Now, there's different types, obviously. Now, I've got a huge stack of military-issued 8x10s. Some of them have government stampings um, on them. Now, if you're talking about just like snapshots, those are different. You might not get as much or you might get more depending on what's in them. The best uh, World War II snapshots I've ever sold were of Japanese Zeros sitting on a runway. No soldiers. Uh, there were they were U.S. soldiers standing near them. And it was a captured runway in Papua New Guinea or something like that. And there was two Japanese Zeros in two different photos. The first one went for five hundred and seventy-four dollars, and the other one went for like six eighty or something. They went phenomenal, and they were just two single. Uh, they were small too, like three by five, not even that big. Maybe f three by four. Some they were smaller. They weren't huge. Those a Japanese zero almost never shows up, so that's like the number one photo that I look for. Now a lot of people get the the Japanese zeros mixed up with some of the British planes because they have a kind of like a similar bullseye. You just have to know, spend a little bit, it's a few minutes to, to determine the difference on those, but I, I love old photos. I've showed off hundreds and hundreds in Patreon and talked about old photos for quite some time. Uh, let's see here. There goes my feed. Hang on, let me see if I can pop back. I just lost where we were at. My feed bounced. Oh, I guess we're way off. Here we go. The only easy day was yesterday. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. Dr. Dingledorf, how are you doing? West Virginia, huh? Some of the postcards from West Virginia selling for some monster prices. And I know it's not just me getting those prices. I've had three or four Patreons reach out. And one shared a 350 some odd dollar West Virginia postcard sale. I shouted out why those are worth something in Patreon video, just FYI. Uh, yeah, Steve List is saying they should all be on your ended listings page. Now, on our case, I delete those before I end another batch. So I'll do 200. Once I know that they've all fully been relisted, and again, I may reload the page twice just to make sure, then I go back and delete the old ones. If you don't, you might get a little confused on which ones you've relisted and on and on and on. So the minute I'm done with the first 200 end and sell similar, then I start another one. That means everything else from the first 200 is already deleted, so I don't have anything sitting in there. I just double-checked on that. There may be another way. I Again, I, I've never, I haven't had to do that in years. Um, I'm, I'm extremely careful because I'm paranoid about doing just that. And I maybe overthink it and, do, and look way too many times. I may waste more time reloading just to make sure I, I relisted them. But I, I'm not relist, but sell similar. Um, I'm paranoid on that. 
I feel for you 100%. Yeah, I know they don't show up. Unsolds is where I actually go in and delete them, and that does remove. And ended listings are usually sold listings um, for us. So if it's a sold listing, when I'm doing end and sell similar, I actually dump the sold listing itself. I have it on a spreadsheet anyway, so if I ever need to bring it back for some oddball reason. Um, when you end and sell similar, well, we use zero quantity. I've talked about it. We use zero quantity option on eBay. So when our item quantity goes down to zero, the, the listing still stays active. It doesn't disappear. So it's active, I think, for, what's it, like 90 days or, or 120 days or something. Maybe it's even six months. So at the end of the day, if it's been re, you know been running for, for a certain length, it will zero out and it'll show up as ended and, and it won't be in the same spot as unsold. Unsold and ended are two different things, so that's one way I've seen people get mixed, mixed up on there. I don't keep anything once it's been relisted. Um, I know their duplicate listing policy enforcement is pretty strict, which is good in my opinion because you won't end up uh, selling similar the same items twice. The titles are usually what nags them or what snags them, the ones that I personally had to deal with, and that's what I, I mess with. Robert Charles Manson, how are you doing this evening? Did you list that unique program you showed on a short from the 1880s, I think? I'm not sure which one specifically you'd be talking about. I've had many of that kind of thing. Uh, sorry to hear that, Michelle. Try Do a Google search on uh, eBay deleted list or finding eBay deleted listings. Just that those specific keywords on a Chrome search and then sort them by the last year. Filter it by the last year and see what happens. That might be your best bet because there might be somebody out there who has a video on it right now. If that is anything that's out there right now. But I, again, what happened two or three years ago, the system is different. So I wouldn't go by those. I would look in the, the past year. I, I can't think on specifics on that. I, I'm trying to think where else it would be. But without actually playing around with it, I couldn't say for sure. Now, you, you might... You can archive things, so you might want to check and see. Maybe you have, maybe there's an auto archive feature. I, I can't think if there is or not, but we archive sales from canceled sales all the time. So maybe the archives, you know, deleted. I don't remember. It's been so long. We keep stuff stored off eBay too, so I don't just have eBay to back up my stuff. I back it up elsewhere. I don't trust that eBay will keep track of it after those that photo issue a few years ago when they lost millions, tens of millions of photos from tens of millions of sellers. I still found one just the other day with only one image from that October photo loss that they did. Yeah, look it up though, Michelle. I think that would be your best bet at this point. BL1, how are you doing? Tone Morris, how are you doing, Tone? Well, thank you very kindly. Thank you very kindly. Dr. Dingledorf, I'm a full-time resale. I love your down there. Well, thank you very kindly. Hey, Jiminy. Uh, Marty's in the house too. Jiminy Flippin, another YouTuber as well. Yeah, I was going to say I couldn't send offers at all, as I said, for like 10 hours today. But I, I swear, every time I didn't do it on the old computer, the minute I went to the new one here, this one has everything. It, it's got dual th threading. and I mean, it, it does. it's got everything you can get on a computer. It's got a massive hard drive. It's got 128 um, uh, gigabytes of, of memory. I mean, it, it's got everything. It's got the max I could get. We spent a fortune on this thing. It doesn't happen on this at all. I didn't, none of that. I, every time it wouldn't do it on the those other two older units, it would do it here perfectly fine. Uh, as well as the wife's laptop, I went up and tried that because I was sitting there waiting for something to cook. And hers is on Windows 11 as well. So Windows 11, whatever, whatever happened, I could just instantly go and, and send offers to watchers on another one. We've got, I got a massive, I got a bunch of laptops and we've got quite a few towers still because I'm a big old PC guy. So um, it worked on most of them, but anything older than, you know, a few years was, it wasn't working on. So I really think that maybe there's something that it was stopping it from working because of something tied to the, the older the, uh, technology, maybe. If they're updating everything again, they're probably running off new stuff. When you put in new hardware and stuff, you, you, that's when you're updating it. You do it all at the same time so you wouldn't have issues later on. If you plan on updating it and, you know, changing hardware, you do it at the same time. At least I would because, again, that way you'd know right off the bat. Hopefully they test it all and do a virtual machine and all that kind of stuff, but I doubt it. 
Um, yeah, I didn't. The brow, the clear browser didn't work. We tried that too because initially I was I was figuring there was it was um, something to do locally. I figured I didn't um, that the PC the the tower that the was issues were happening on wasn't turned on on Tuesday night. So it didn't get the Microsoft update. So a lot of times when we have issues, the first thing I always check is was the, the laptop or the tower off Tuesday. I try to keep everything running. And then again, we did updates for some hardware this, this week here ourselves. But if you keep them running, it automatically updates. And I've got it set and I've got a, uh, a script that comes in that will update anything else. So if, if it conflicts. The only thing I hate on the Windows 11 the, the one I do my videos on to Windows 11 is whenever an update comes in on Tuesday well not every time but half the time it changes my default microphone and it it really really bites me because I've recorded twice and I had to reshoot because of the sound issues so anyway my, my stupidity for not checking it out I guess yeah I'm, I'm assuming it's updates I can live with it because we were I just did everything on a different one, and I didn't have those problems. I, I literally, it, it started working again on, on the older one on its own, like um, two hours, three hours ago, I want to say. Um, but it worked fine on all the other, other units, the new stuff. Windows 11, it didn't, even the laptop upstairs, which isn't that new, but it's on Windows 11. I really think that they're, they're using the latest um, tech is what I would say. Why would you use anything older? You'd go to the latest stuff out there, so you'd have the longest use of whatever you're going to change. That makes the most sense. So I can see where older PCs may have some issues. You got a tower from 10 years ago, even though it might work for everything else, it may not work for that. I did try with Firefox just to make sure, or Mozilla Firefox, and I did try with. Um, I even tried on a Linux on, on a Ubuntu, and it worked fine too. I I keep a Linux around here. I learned that in college, and I've never given it up. I've always had one running here just because it's. Anyway, I'm, I'm not going to get into it. If you're a PC person like, like me, old school computer nerd, you'll, you'll get it, the Linux part. Um, bah, 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 where are we at? Something with cookies or something that eBay stores are causing issues, clear cash. Yeah, it didn't work for, for us here, as I said. I do all that stuff. I tried everything. We rebooted. I you know, did a, a secondary. I've got a third-party app that I use sometimes to find um, issues that may need to be updated that other things don't catch. Because if you don't sometimes go into your, your um, what the heck is it called? Your control panel sometimes sometimes I'll just go through there randomly and, and check if it needs an update now almost always find something so we finally just got something a friend of ours does but uh, got a little uh, scripting set up and it'll automatically do all that for us and check everything so and that's usually what happens it's something really stupid an emulator or some some really stupid lame little tiny checkbox and everything works fine after that's fixed um, Auction Monkey. Three buyers couldn't send offers this week that we know of. They sent us messages asking if we would accept an offer, wondering how my, uh, many didn't bother to send us a note. Yeah, there there was some stuff definitely going on this week. But again, I, I it could be their their PC. Uh, it could be that they're using something older. They didn't clear out cash. It could be a ton of things, which is sad. If it's affecting a seller here with the cash, chances are it's affecting the buyer just as much. But the buyer may not get it. So the buyer may not contact you. The buyer may not contact eBay. They may think it's something and, and not know anything about it or not mess with it or just go elsewhere is my only concern. So when we're seeing the, the glitches, from my understanding and from what we've tried to determine, it looks like the, the buyer side's uh, receiving the very same glitch. Again, that's that's what I've seen. That's my personal opinion on what I've seen from, from the data. Um, because I buy stuff on eBay, you know, Weebles a lot for the wife and stuff, but we do other things. Um, so again, it, it affects both sides, the buyer and the seller. As you see, the, the, the buyer can't, you know, send you an offer. That's terrible. It's about as bad as them telling the buyer that I don't ship to them when I send out an offer. I sent an offer out and eBay for a long time was telling the buyer, hey, he doesn't ship to you. Here's an offer, but this guy ain't going to ship to you. That's basically what eBay would say word for word in their emails. I've got copies of them, quite a few, and I know it was doing it over, like every one I sent out, it would tell people that. You know, let's move on. Sales right now, you know, I am not going to complain about sales right now. Considering everything that goes on, I'm pretty happy with the results we've had. 
Um, if I've been a little slow, we've just taken up slack. We've run a sale, a higher sale, or we've flipped a few things on a, a couple other spots. I sold some uh, models the other day that made up for any deficiency I had the other day. So, you know, if, if you've got more than one revenue stream, you'll do far better. You know, don't just put all your eggs in one basket. That basket breaks, then what do you do? Have 20 different baskets and put eggs in each one of those baskets and then off you go. We've got like 14 revenue streams, in all honesty. And, you know, I, I've, I've got an opportunity for a, another one at this point. Those in Patreon, I've talked about KDP. That's a, a fairly good revenue stream. Um, quantity matters with anything else. Quantity in my store, quantity on something like that. Um, anyway, if you're enjoying the conversation, please slam that thumbs up. I got 162 people in house. I got 59 thumbs up there. So if you're enjoying the conversation, please show some love for the channel. Uh, yeah, when do you have a VPN? My iPad has a free option in settings for a VPN. I think it helps prevent the eBay tracking. Yeah, it you can avoid some of that, but eBay could block you. Some of the tech could block you by having a VPN because they can kind of tell on some of that because of you know your 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 mac address and things like that it's anyway I, I i would say that there could be some issues ebay can block it from what i understood there is some issues with stuff like that like netflix is working on blocking any of that so you can't you know use a vpn and watch netflix shows from other countries uh, and that's one of the things that they're going nuts over. I know Net Netflix, what, they lose almost a million subscribers last year or the last quarter or something. Hey, Crystal, how are you doing? Crystal, good to see you in the house. Hopefully everything's fine and dandy on your end. Hey, Cindy, how are you doing? See, Liz Michelle Trout, did you check an end of listings on Seller Hub under listings also? Uh, let me pop down here. That's one net. I don't understand how you have so many RPMs running through your brain daily to comfort as much as you do. What does a professional picker eat for breakfast? I don't, I sometimes I don't eat at all for breakfast, in all honesty. And I'll just try and catch something on there. Work comes first. L let, let's talk about, let's talk about a day because I, I've heard this a million times. I only have to work four hours a day. I hear people saying this and that. You know, I don't have to work hardly at all. This is just a piece of cake. Everything, the money just rolls in. I only know a couple people that do... Well, I, I might know six people who do really, really, really well, beyond what I do, and, and they do very well. But they all, every one of those puts in more hours. Well, probably in the same range as I do. I know some people put in a lot less hours, but they don't make anywhere near what I would. Time-wise, I do every day of the week. I don't have to. I sometimes will take a you know part of a day off, but there isn't a day in the week that goes by where I don't do something. If I always get up early, I can't sleep. The I have insomnia beyond belief. I always feel like I'm never getting anything done, and I'm just sitting there relaxing in the bed. It seems like someday. So I'm 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 up early every day. I'm up six something or, or before usually, and the rest of the family may not be up for an hour or two. So every single even on the Sunday or something, I'll do a couple hours of something. I'll scan i'll do some photos i'll maybe price a whole bunch of stuff if i'm waiting on dinner i'm sitting at the kitchen table or i'm you know i've got something cooking or i was grilling burgers today i grilled a whole bunch of cheeseburgers for everybody today while they were sitting on the grill i was sorting stuff on the kitchen table our kitchen table almost always these days has stuff all over it and we usually use it for sorting because i got a leaf we can put in and it's like i don't know 12 I don't, it's, a, it's a long table with the leaf in it gives us a lot of space i don't have to set up a secondary table and then sort it move it and it's all off the table and off we go for dinner um i if something's on tv and i'm waiting on commercials i'll be doing something sorting shoving stuff in bags i mean I'm, I'm always thinking about stuff like that if we go to the mall which i don't do very often but i'm always looking what can i make some money on even in the mall the lunchbox i think it's called we've made money off of that store i don't know how many times Sometimes Spencer's you can make some money off of. Again, if we're there shopping, usually I pay. If, if we go to the mall looking for clothing, most of the time I can pay for the visit through a clearance section at one of the toy stores or even occasionally from GameStop or Lunchbox or something. It, it, it's not always eBay I'd be selling the stuff on either, so just keep that in mind. Everything doesn't sell on eBay. We don't just do eBay. You know, That's another question. I sell on... I've got a lot of revenue streams, as I said, 13 plus still working. Um, let's pop on down here. 
Um, I, but again, let's let's let me finish off that for Antoinette. I, I don't. Sometimes I don't eat. If it's if it's an early run, I just go and do my thing. I try to eat at the same time every day. So if I got to get up early, I don't usually eat real early. I try to eat the same time every day. Just me. I guess it's force of habit. I've got a schedule. I try to keep to my schedule. So if I get up six, uh, this has to be done by ten. And you know, if if I'm the only one here or up that early, we we sometimes have to have mail out depending on the day of the week these days, and ready to go by nine a.m. in the morning now. So that has to be packed ready we'll have our our um, master scan sheets all shot and whether two or three however many master scan sheets we have and those will be all setting up there top of the steps ready ready to go i always get in an issue with our postmaster because she tells me we're supposed to leave the boxes out in the porch and i told her no way on earth would i ever do that but anyway that's the way it goes um travel picker pat dees how are you doing pat hopefully things are going well and you're traveling i see from your local coin collector, RPM and numerous stands for repunched mint mark. Yeah, there you go, Brandon. The good old dial up days, Joe. Yeah, I wore, we started eBay on dial up with AOL with the the CD ROMs that they used to give out for that. Um, yeah, that that's the old school. That's how long I've been doing it. We used to do the Yahoo um auction things way way before ebay there was yahoo auctions you could do too and then we did some of the message boards so i used to advertise on big reel magazine they had um a, a big um like a sale board that you could sell stuff on big reel was i think they're still around maybe back in the the 80s and or late 80s 90s big reel was massive it was a uh, like a newspaper, kind of like the size of a Rolling Stone, the newspaper Rolling Stone size. And it would advertise like um, collectibles, movie posters, stills, lobby cards, um, 35 millimeter uh, film and art, everything tied to the movies and, and stuff like that. And that used to be the big one. So we'd always, I worked at a movie theater back then, so I'd always advertise all the posters I got because they were official NSS, you know, National Screen Service posters. And I would always sell them there. And the other place I used to sell stuff on on their their for sale board was the big big red toy box. And I think they still have a spot on eBay because eventually they closed down the big red toy box after eBay took off and then they started selling their stuff and closed down the for sale boards on there and started selling their stuff on eBay. It was huge back. That was one of the biggest ones for toys and vintage was the big red toy box. And their their um it used to have, I think, literally a big toy box opening was like their main graphics for it, if I'm not mistaken. It's been a long time. I'm sure I have a screenshot somewhere. Uh, let's slide down here a little bit. For real, I did 8K last month, 700 this month. Yeah, Douglas. Douglas, that's a perfect example one thing I can tell you is our revenue is very solid. It's very, I mean, it stays within a certain range all the time, all the time. There's no, I've never had a month where we were 7,000 or 8,000 or whatever, or 20,000 or whatever. And then the next month it was like 500. I've never had one of those. It's always within a certain range. And that comes with quantity. And it comes with, you know, doing things like, in my opinion, and in South Similar works really well. Um, running the two-day sales works very, very well also. I mean, though, when one ends, I, I run it again. Um, we've simplified it. I've sped it up. We do a quarter of our store end and sell similar. Four times is all we're ending and sell similar. Four days a month. That's it. And the rest of it's just doing two-day sales over and over and over and over again. You know, I do rotate sometimes the, the dollar or what the sale bottom line is. Um, I've done that for uh, quite some time now, heading on the year mark, and it's worked very well. I'm perfectly happy, as I said. Obviously, I'd like to have more sales, but I'm fine with everything going on, the economy and you know war and all the other uh, crap going on. I, I'm doing fine. I, I can't honestly complain, considering we know people are in bad state right now. And again, I'm not trying to make belittlement or anything else like that. I'm I'm grateful for for what we got going on, and honestly, I'm I'm you know I I'm just shocked that we don't have to worry about things that maybe a lot of other people do just because it's running so well. Again, I put a lot, I I put more work than than most people would imagine in, and that's I live, eat, sleep, drink, you know, reselling, and not by 
I was gonna say not by choice. It is by choice, but I, uh, that's me. I can't. I I can't get turn off that thought that I I want to do this or I want to do that. If I wake up in the middle of the night, I can't sleep. I'm probably down here pricing something for 20 minutes, you know, and then going back to bed or something. That's honestly what happens. Sometimes the wife will wonder where I'm at and come yell down, "You down there doing you know listing or something?" So anyway, that's just me. Um, Again, I do like 70 hours or 80 hours a week usually, and it doesn't feel like work, though. I know people say, well, you're, you're, you're doing too many hours, you're going to kill yourself, but it's, it doesn't feel like work. I worked in restaurants where, you know, I used to unload the truck with, other, with the regular employees. I, that's work. Unloading, you know, 1,200-piece count truck, that's like a quarter of a semi for our store. That's a lot of stuff. It all has to be broken down off pallets and box by box, rolled in on a hand cart, and then from there, hand stuffed into the shelf. Everything on the shelf has to be pulled out and then rotated. People don't understand the amount of work. And we got two deliveries a week at, at one of the restaurants I worked in. So that's a lot of product moving in and out. Our store did 62000 I think, the last week I was there. So, I mean, it was doing, I mean, that's the amount of money. You've got to have two deliveries. But anyway, it's a lot of work. That's sweat work. That's that's manual labor. It's long hours there. I'm in, I wasn't getting the lion's share of the profits for my work. So, again, passion is, is the key to this and having a vision of what you want out of this. I know what I want. There's no way on earth I'm ever going to work for somebody again unless I'm, you know, uh, I, I can't walk or I'm, I mean, I, I can't imagine anything at this point, you know, changing that. I, I, I would never, I'd do anything legal and within ethics to, to keep this going. And again, I, I work really hard because I don't want to work for anybody else. I've done that and wasted 20 years of my life. I missed my kids' first steps, first everything. I, I missed everything that was important or, or should have been more important than worrying about the money. But again, you need money. I didn't think reselling was a full-time endeavor. Who on earth would expect that I could do this, you know? I look at what some of my other friends do working for somebody else, and it's, it's you know... You know, it's just it's like night and day, I should say. You know, even if they make decent money, I still make more than them. I think we. I don't want to go into that, but I. It, it's. I, I see myself and some other folks that I that are friends with it. You know, I know how they feel with the job, and they don't want to do reselling, or they're too worried they can't afford it. They've got insurance, you know, health insurance and stuff. We got to get that all on our own as a reseller. Just FYI, you don't just get that. You've got to go out and buy it and the whole works. We've got a BOP, again, which is something if, if if you've never been a business, you've got licenses to worry about. You've got, if you've got employees, then you've got to worry about, you've got to get your EIN, you've got to worry about, you know, workman's comp and insurance re, uh, reports and your quarterly payments, you know, tax withholding statements and all that stuff. We we have accountant just because I don't want to have to deal with that. There's a lot to this, and if you're just going to be a one person show, there's only so far most people can go. I know there are some one person shows that broke out and they're they're doing awesome, far better than me. But that's the the one in a million is from what I see. It. I can't do it, and I've got people working for me, so it's not it's nowhere near as easy as I see all the videos. You're going to find this best find ever and all that stuff. I know I've got videos that say that because. It was the best find ever, but, you know, it's not easy. This is not easy. I put in every day, every day of the week, and that's just the way it is. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. it it's it's enjoyable. It's soothing, I guess. eBay's calmed down. I haven't had many issues with the site other than today. Again, I just popped to another, another PC. Um, the sales are still rolling in. In fact, again, as I said, I'm up from last year at the same exact time frame considering what's going on. And last year I did pretty darn good, so I can't complain. Um, Linda Wyatt, why descriptions not showing up when you are looking at items? Do we still need to do our own descriptions? If you note a flaw, then they do not see it and buy it. Descriptions are showing up. I don't. If you're talking about condition, you've got a condition box and you've got your description box. Some things these days I put in the condition box because that shows up on a phone at the top and they don't have to hit a second another button. The, the most important information should be the least steps away. So the less amount of clicks a person has to do on their phone, the better. Because people aren't going to read any long description on a phone usually. Most of the time you have to you know, click to get into the listing. But the condition box, at least on my phone, shows up. So that's where I put stuff in like size and measurements, any defects or issues with the item there. 
I have a blanket description for every listing that I have. Other, the only thing I change on that description is a one word, like the type of item. I might have to change a couple words if I'm selling one item versus a lot of items. I'll put in a lot of five instead of this item or something like that. Um, again, autom or automate everything, simplify everything, assembly line everything. It's easy peasy. Get your work done first and then worry about taking time and goofing off. Matt Jake, how are you doing this evening? Good to see you in house as well. Henry S. Thrift price is going up here. I saw a modern cigar box, twenty dollars, DVDs four to seven, the guitar magazine, ten dollars. What is going on here? Depends on where you're at. I guess that's the best thing I can tell you on that one. Um, I've found a few really decent items at uh, thrift stores, and I never go to a thrift store. The only reason we went to uh, I'm not to get back into it. I don't want to keep going, but it was for a table, and we were looking for uh, um, a uh, thing for Jack at the Humane Society. But other than that, I really don't enjoy thrift stores too much these days, just because it seems that it's mostly been picked through or there's people that come in and got secret deals with the store if it's a smaller one they hold stuff for certain people and i don't know if they swap money behind the scenes or what but i'm not going to do stuff like that i don't i don't if, if i can't get a normal deal i'm not going to try and snake it out and i'll give you this or do that i offer commission if somebody turns something my way that's i offer it to everybody though i don't ever try to say hey i'll say hey i offer a commission if you're interested if not oh well you know no big deal um, yeah, Brandon's talking about inflation and all. Gas prices were around here are down. It's almost down a dollar from their high. Henry asks, I bought a thousand postcards for 50 bucks, hoping to do well or have steady inventory. Just be careful on those. If, if they're not good postcards, they're modern postcards, you might only get a handful that are worth that. Maybe you'll get your money back easily, but you may not make a ton of money, and it might cost you a ton of time looking up stuff. The amount is not what I worry about. It's the, the, the quality of the content I'm buying is what I worry about. I'd rather have 10 good items than 1,000 bad items. I'm not saying you're not going to do good. I'm just always... Don't ever assume that quantity means that you're going to make a ton of money. I used to make that mistake all the time with records. I'd buy 5,045. This is years ago. I, these days I look through them all every time, and I have for years, but 10 years or so, maybe 15 years ago, I would just buy, if somebody had a 5,000 lot of 45, so just buy them. Sometimes $500 I'd sink into them and stuff. I thought, oh, well, that's a decent price. But, you know, if they've already been looked through, and you don't know the, the oddball genres like, you know, maybe lounge. I like lounge and exoticas, like the areas that I make more money in, in big lots like that, only because most people don't know them and they just think they're just junk junkers and clunkers and trash them or just re-auction or resell them off. Because when I buy a 5,000 lot, I pick out the ones I want and then I just turn around, add up enough more into that lot, and then I turn around and resell it as a 5,000 45 count lot usually. Sometimes if they're like good r and I'll sell them for like, uh, or sell a lot of 100, 125, which is about what fits in a, in a what is it, 12 cube. Um, I can put one stack this way, line up two stacks side by side running next to it, and that'll fit 125 in one of those. Um, yeah, I wish you good luck on that, Henry, for sure. Interesting to hear what you get out of that. Yeah, so here's Kelly saying the same thing. I'll spend some patience. Postcards do start early, but you're only getting five to ten dollars to sale. Got to sell a lot. I my average on postcards is like seventeen eighty or somewhere in that range. That's my average price on any postcard. Um, I do sell some for a couple hundred bucks. I don't usually include those in my average because those are the outliers. I did get a real nice postcard today from somebody. Let me see how well you're going to be. I'll have to flip a screen. That's a pretty good one there. The kids football team there. I don't know what this one's worth, but I'm not probably going to put less than 75 on it. But I wished I could have got more of those from that person. But, you know, I, again, I get one here, one there, and I never get, you know, the super, super good. We did sell a postcard the other day for 100 something. If I run into Christmas, Halloween, and eat good Easter ones, I can usually get an average 25 or so out of any one of those. Um, if you, I'll say this, Kelly, if, if you have a quantity, again, a large enough quantity up, 
you can afford to wait a little longer in each one and then get more out of them. I would rather sell a few less at much higher of a price than sell a whole bunch for five or ten bucks. I never even list a postcard these days, pretty much, if it's not going to get me like fourteen ninety nine or higher. I've just set that limit there. And so we don't list quite as many, but I sell more dollar for dollar. I guess that's the point. Again, it took me years to be able to figure out which ones to quickly determine are going to get me the money back real quick. Real photo, real picture postcards are usually the top of the, the rung there for us. Transportation, top of the rung. Um, I got some, well, I'll wait, I'll save that for a Patreon video. I got a couple real nice brochures, not in the greatest condition, but they're really some really spectacular pieces. I'll have to show those in a video here. Um, one out of three is a bit high, I'm thinking. Auction monkey. Uh, Frozen house. I found a $400 Playmobil train set. You talk about the monorail with the motor. It was pure luck. Yeah, again, most of the time, most everybody out there, maybe you'll watch a, a YouTube channel or something. And I'm not trying to say all oh, YouTube's bad or nothing. So there, there's really good YouTubers out there, but they'll only show you this one pick each time like one real good video they're showing this find this that may be all they really found for the whole week worth some money I, I go for I buy bulk I'm mostly all bulk these days I mean for everything it's very rare for me to find a single postcard or something it's usually hundreds or a thousand or a couple thousand or something records same way buttons same way trade cards um, gum cards um, I, I, I never like to go for the one-offs. I'd rather just get bulk everything and be done with the comic books I buy in bulk these days. Long boxes at a time, four long boxes at a time, a van full or something. Um, well, not a van anymore. I've got to take it in a nice vehicle because I don't have a beater running right now. But, um, you know, you, you've got to center in. And again, about why it's so hard. If you can't get bulk and you're one-offing one everything, you, you're... You're wasting probably three times the amount of time that I spend on sourcing. You're spending three times as much time as maybe five, ten times as much time as somebody who's a bulk purchaser. It, it's just a fact. I can buy 200, 300 items all at once. You know, and I can pick, I can hand pack at which items I want to buy. Uh, if this this is a big bulk purchase, two or 300 items over here, but profit-wise, my average uh, turnaround may only be eight or ten bucks I'm not gonna mess with it even though there might be quantity again I, I've got to have some line the only difference I might say is if it's something that's super super quick to list and it will sell immediately it's almost as quick as I can list it a good chunk of them I may still buy a lesser lesser value item if, if let's say I've got 50 of the exact same items and they only sell for eight bucks but they'll all sell I'd buy those for sure just because I only got to create one listing that's, again, I, my time invested in a listing, it's nothing considering the, the, the fact that I'll sell 50 of the same items for 8 bucks a pop or whatever. It's 400 bucks. It's nothing to laugh about. If you can create one listing and get $400 worth of product up, that's your hour. That's all you need to worry about. Uh, we try to get up $400 worth of merchandise an hour. Bare bones, bottom line, $400 an hour. No matter who's listing, I want them to at least get $400 of product at list price up, up within an hour. Obviously, the more the better, but um, oh, let's see here. Let's see here. Yeah, Playmobil we do very well with, honestly. I've still got some in inventory, but I don't mind waiting. I no, it's it just takes up a room in a bin. So I'd rather wait. Um, after Christmas, if stuff hasn't sold, then I usually look at it. But I keep stuff at full cost or not full cost. I don't discount my or uh, mar lower down my prices. If I list it, so I just get uh, some Playmobil, uh, Playmobil in today. I list it, let's say, for a $25 start bid. I'll never change that opening bid or opening uh, price on it. I'll just run a sale. I never go back anymore, other than like if I want to mess with the logarithm by raising it a dollar or lowering it a dollar. But I never ever change it to drop it down like 10 bucks or 50 bucks at all. If it's up, it's up these days. You know, it, it's done. And then I, I have better luck not dropping the price and just running a sale because, again, it, it's perceived value. The guys got it up for 100 and I can get it for 50 That's a deal to anybody. They see that 50% off blink in there, and that's a push in my book. I, I, I go with the whole... Um, you know, perceived value aspect on everything we sell. 
Uh, I just had somebody today ask me, where are you coming up with your prices from? Well, from what I've sold stuff for and what I get. I, I'm not, I don't have to tell him. I didn't even answer him. The way they were, that he was talking, he was kind of insulting, so I blocked him. I mean, you know, if, if you're going to come at somebody over prices, I can set my price wherever I want with, for my items, especially when I get the prices that I put on it. Uh, let's see where we at. Matt Jake, exactly done. Every day is not a $1,000 day. I used to attend storage auctions way, way before the storage wars show and did it for years. I made good money but never found a Picasso. I've never, we've done a few storage purchases where we've purchased an entire storage locker and stuff. I've never found a phenomenal thing. Wade, Wade's from Wade's Ventures. I've talked to him and he, he's, he's been on my show. I've been on his a couple times too. Um, I want to say we, he had some massive uh, haul from one of them and he, he said that was like one out of hundreds of them is this good one and the rest are just, you know, you got to sell a ton. It's a lot of work and, and stuff. But he makes good money, from what I understand. But you, you, it just doesn't happen. You know, it just doesn't happen like you see on there. I know one of the people from the the Storage Wars said it was all made up, and he got in some big trouble. And then I've also had somebody the wife knows. They run. They they they're a manager at one of the the um, storage lockers that they actually were at the Storage Wars things. And I think it was the one with the uh, it was an airboat or something. They live down in New Orleans out that way. And um, they said that somebody brought that in right before the show, and it left right after the show. So my inclination for what we were told is that was a setup. I remember there was an episode with a smaller airboat in one of them, and I think that's the one. Um, been doing this since uh, Charles Lowe, 1998, and I believe it's harder now than it's ever been. Let, let me put it this way. It probably is when you're just starting off. For us, quantity overrules everything else. If I didn't have quantity up, yeah, it probably would be. But for, for the, if I had to look back at what we were doing back in '98, we weren't doing as well as I'm doing now. I would say, um, yeah, some a lot of stuff sold and stuff, but I, I, I wasn't knowledgeable. There was less people online. There was a lot of different graphic demographics of the the audience, the people, and all this stuff that has changed. There, there's. Overall in reselling, maybe not just on eBay specifically, but overall in reselling, I think the opportunity is still there to... I've never done so well. I mean, I'm, again, I'm not, that's not a brag. It's just I think about those days back in, the, in there, and then we did, it was just extra income. I, I never thought it was possible, so I never did anything with it. I just did it for my days off and figured it was extra money, and I never, I never, I never assumed you could do anything like that. I didn't think, hey, why don't I just start my own business, do it on my own? wished I had but I, I just I don't I think the opportunity is still there as I said I just think it takes the right type of person or again I'm no disrespect to anybody I don't mean that as a it, it takes the right de dedication and passion to me I couldn't do this if I wasn't passionate about it I'd, I hated working in the restaurants after a while because it was the same thing and your bosses never cared and you're you're making the company all this money you're saving the day i busted my butt i exposed the heck out of those restaurants the food went out as fast as you could imagine i cooked i i cleaned i did everything in that restaurant that cleaned the toilets if i had to just to make sure i i made my bonus for every sector that i could get an extra bonus the three sectors which means my boss made more money and i never got an extra dime other than what i was entitled to i never earned the lion's share of it even my boss made way better than you know off of my hard work i know that's the the deal i signed but these days it's all me i don't have to i don't have to share anything i think that's the biggest bet so i'm more passionate more driven to do it because every dime i'm saving and pinching it's coming into my pocket i don't have to share it you know i know you got ebay fees and stuff but there's fees for everything every business out there has a fee they have to pay for something they, even if they own this, the lot, there's, they've got to still pay off the investment in the building. Labor is a fee. If you're running a brick and mortar, your labor is your biggest expense probably. That's almost always the, the biggest expense. And the biggest expense in any building out there is the general manager in that store followed by the assistant managers. That's where the majority of all the labor costs go to. That's the majority. It's the highest expense for most any business out there. The next one would probably be like a restaurant would be the food cost. You know, the, the cost of goods sold. And see, I'm, I'm not so on the business side of it. So I, that some, for some folks, that's made what you, you have to learn the business aspect. I would, I would say the best way to make this easier instead of harder when you first start off is to treat it from day one as a real full-fledged business that you got to show up and work for. Pretend it's somebody else's business if that helps you. 
you've got to be there at this time and write down your time, keep track of how long you're working, and you know, for a little while until you you've got a good hang and are able to to delegate to yourself. So you're able to to uh, monitor your own time. No one's watching you. There's no you know time clock watchers when it's your own time. You've got to be able to allocate your time to to get the most pro, uh, most productivity out of yourself. And too many people can't do that. That's that's a huge. Again, I'm 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 nuts. So I'm mainly retentive on time, and I just wished I had more of it. But you know, I, I get a lot more done than the vast majority of people that that I hang with, only because I'm I'm so mainly retentive about my time. You know, and again, if, if let's say the wife wants to do something or we're going to go out and see a movie or something, Cracker Barrel spoiled our week, our weekend last weekend. Um, I should shoot that one out there. But um, I stage everything ahead of time. If I know I'm going to take off a day or most of Sunday or whatever, I'll do extra work on other days to make up. So I'm not killing my extra time. It's just me. I don't have to do that. But that's just me. And if you want to be successful, I truthfully think you've got to be that dedicated where five minutes is a waste that you you don't want to happen that five minutes may be you getting two three four more listings up and making an extra hundred dollars because you spent five more minutes throwing up a couple more listings that may sound crazy but if you spend five more minutes each day and you can get five listings up or two listings up or even one more listing up at the end of the week that's seven at the end of the week hope or at the end of the month hopefully that's 30 new items you've gotten up 360 at the end of a year and that's just for spending five extra minutes you know Again, quantity is everything in my book. The, the days of finding the high dollar stuff every time I went out, which we did years ago, that happened all the time. I couldn't go anywhere without finding good stuff because no one was doing this. Those days are gone. So quantity is going to make up that difference. If you can get quantity of a little lesser valued items, you know, $24, $25 range, you'll do far better than only worrying about the highest dollar things you can think of because you're not going to find them like that. Those are, those are so far around here. If, I don't know how clothing sellers can live around here. I, I don't know where the heck they get the stuff at. You know, I, I uh, even garage sales, I don't know because I just don't see it. You know, that's probably why I'm, uh, there aren't many clothing resellers I see around this area. There's no savers. They, they went out of business. That's how bad it is around here. Um, Goodwill, anybody who goes, go, does a Goodwill store when they've got higher end places, Goodwill uh, clothing is usually just not even worth wearing, you know. Plus, the Goodwill around here has their own auctions on their own site. Uh, let's pop back over here. Henry has new card shop are selling inflated product from Target and Walmart because they can't get the grandfathered vendor deals. Yeah, I hear you on that, too. I know exactly. I had a friend who ran a card shop in, in Florida. He's the first. He gave me the C. If you know what, um, uh, Bo Jackson, Emmett Smith... Action Packed was a, I don't know if they're still out or I don't, I'm not a sports person, but I was never a sports person. He was, he was a guy who worked at the, at the shop. He ran it. It was his father's. His father gave it to him for his 18th birthday or some crap. He had money. His father was like a professional tennis player, but he, he knew one of the distributors for Action Packed and the uh, distributor told him it was Bo Jackson. It was Bo Jackson's uh, uh, rookie card was in one of the Action Packed and he told him where it was in every box. So he would always just pull out that one card, and sure enough, that's exactly where it was. That was one of those insider deals that he got. Back in the day, I had contracts myself with, um, in fact, well, I don't want to get a screen, but I still have one of the, I have a Golden Glove hologram lot, a whole bunch of them, the prototype cards that I got. Back then, you could get a uh, uh, um, distributor deal with even the bigger companies, and I got tops I could sell at one time, straight from them, and I was only, I, I fibbed on my, my age back in those days and I you know I created a, a storefront just to get the deal and all this other stuff and anyway you could you could it was easy enough to do back then and I we were selling them straight I was getting them straight from the manufacturer it's the golden uh, golden glove uh, prototype hologram and I, I can't remember this series but they, I had Nolan Ryan holograms that they had given us and ticket holograms and I mean I had a whole mess and we were able to sell them and everything straight from the manufacturer there was tops and a couple other brands we had the same dealings for at one time we had a had a insider route to impel when um, the 25th anniversary Star Trek cards were out and again I was told how to tell um, uh, inserts and then I figured out how to get the holograms out of those easily too because it was an extra insert into the pack so if you held up the two packs of the Star Trek 90 I think it was 91 when the Impel 25th anniversary series came out 
for the trading cards. And I would go to Toys R Us. They'd have boxes of these things out there. And I would just sit there and hold one pack up to, next to the another until I felt one that was thicker. And that would be the only one I would buy. And every one of those packs was an extra card. And it was a, a hologram. And those holograms back then, I was in Florida. And they were selling for, I could get 25 bucks in cash instantly. They would sell for 42 to 50 online. But I would take them down to a place in Orlando called NC. S 1701, which was a big Star Trek sci-fi collectible shop. Maybe it's still there. I don't know. Um, and it was like near I Drive, International Drive, and I'd sell them every one. So I would go to Toys R Us, as everyone in town, and I'd do it. And then we'd go out of town, and I'd do the local ones too. And I'd pull out all the holograms, and then I would sell them to that shop for twenty-five bucks a piece. We've walked out with five hundred dollars in cash selling them all of our holograms back in those days. But I got an insider information on stuff from one of those one of those groups. Um, I know, long tangent story, but that's a true story. Anybody who li Orlando probably probably would remember if you're my age. Um, and then we knew Atomic Pharaoh, that was a comic shop. We knew the owners, and we used to be able to get autographs from all the comic artists that would tour, and we got to meet and know quite a few famous ones, like the Cry for Dawn artist. Um, we, I won't get into names or anything, but we, we got to go out to lunch with them, and we got to talk. I mean, anyway, long story short, that was Atomic Pharaoh. They, they may still be open. I have no clue. I haven't checked out Florida shops in years. Um, where are we at? Ideal, uh, Dr. Dingledorf, I deal mainly in vintage clothing. Uh, clothes, and I still have pieces that I bought when I first started trying to figure it out. Laugh out loud, had no clue. Yeah, we ended up just getting rid of all of our clothing. I, other than the only thing I buy clothing is um, leather jackets, vintage leather that I can wear. I've got like 60 leather jackets, all my size. My son asked, well, what are you going to do with all those jackets? Can, you, can I have one? I'm like, I, I wear I They all fit me. It's the only reason I bought them. He still wears my, some of my jackets because he can wear them too. But I got a lot of leather jackets. I'm no, probably literally 60 of them. Um, Javier Sharma, how you doing? I went to an estate sale last, uh, last day. Walked away with a box full of 1950s, 60s mail order catalogs for six bucks. Well, that should be pretty good. If it's a whole box full of them, even random ones, um, the ones I think do the best are like uh, farming equipment and stuff like that, advertising, toys, all the toy ones do extremely well for us, even clothing to some extent, but for six bucks for a whole box, you probably get 15, 20 for most of the common ones. 1.21 gigawatts, yeah, back to the future and the life of research. My store has a thousand, I wouldn't expect to do the same as someone who has 3,000 in my store, let alone 30,000 items. Yeah, the, pro, the what I would say with that, and again, no disrespect to anybody, on this, not, this isn't meant that way. People don't get the... Diff, I, I, if you're just starting off, you see a lot of people that are saying how successful they are. They do this, they do that. They're making all this money. It's, it's hard for people to say, well, if they're doing it, I can do it. You know, But you've got to think that they've been doing it for so long. They've got a certain skill set. It, it, it's a lot harder. I mean, it really is. It's a lot harder. Even when I had somebody like Buttons, when I first started in Buttons, I had somebody show me. I, I got to see him in front of me. He had a huge collection. He showed me and spent some time with me, and he really helped me out a lot. But I still, for a long time, even even was looking at them, it still was confusing sometimes when I was out in the general public trying to buy something. And I, I made a lot of mistakes. These days, it's been, a, it's been a heck of a long time since I made a, a purchase mistake. If I'm not sure, I, I just don't buy it. Because they're always something, the next minute something else walks into my, my, my presence. So I never worry anymore, too, about passing something by. I know there's people that are always afraid to, you know, miss something, you know, or pass it by. And they always take a chance. You know, who knows? I don't take chances anymore. You know, I, I've, I've worked extremely hard for, for the money that I have. And I've taken a chance to me is like gambling. And I don't gamble. I don't gamble with my personal money. If my boss, I was working for somebody else, and they told me, take a chance. If you think you got it right, that's a different story. But I don't gamble with my own money. I just don't do it. And it's got to be a sure thing. Again, if I pass on something that I'm not sure on, the next turnaround, it's usually something good anyway, and I, I'm, I'm all set. I only go after specific type of things. Quick to list, five photos or less. That's what I want. Easy to store, small items. I've, I've learned my lessons with the bigger stuff, and I'm, again, I, even like poster wise, I've got some posters that'll be that extra $4 increase in shipping. But uh, let's see here. Frozen House. I only do uh, church, thrift shops, and garage sales. No Goodwill or, or Sally's. 
Antoinette, yeah, Goodwill Blows. You know, once in a blue moon, uh, I, there's one Goodwill that's way on the other side of town for me. And I found Mark's there, Mark's Toys, a bunch of tanks on two or three occasions and the, the, the soldiers themselves. Certain things at certain stores are missed because they're usually dumped in big bins and stuff. Those are usually one of the, the betterest. But that's about it. The last time I was at Goodwill, we found uh, some tanks, and they went really quick. I made a lot of money, but that was the, that was just a lark. I wasn't going there to, to source because they almost never have anything at any of the Goodwills around here. If they think it's even half good, it goes to their online auction site, and that's it. You'll never see it in the store. Uh, Goodwill blows, Bob Hill. I use my VPN today and search uh, San Francisco for one of my items. Not there. I searched eBay ID. Not there. I searched your ID. And it came up with uh, 1892 items listed. Yes. 36K. See, if you're using a VPN, my concern is that it, it, may, it may be limiting what you can see out of safety concerns. eBay can read your MAC address, basically, which is the address on your, your Internet connection device. It's a permanent number that's usually tied to it. There's a, there's a way where you can have that change. I'm not going to get into doing it because I'm, I'm not going to try and tell somebody how to do something that may be not the best thing to do. Let's just put it that way. But I, I would try it without your VPN on, truthfully. That would be my personal opinion. I've had somebody else tell me that I don't show up, but every time I look, I see my stuff. I looked again today and, and stuff because somebody else told me that yesterday. I appreciate everybody telling me, Bob, so I'm not trying to trying to blow that off at all. Um, I would probably suggest maybe not using the VPN and see what happens. Or try, you know, a different uh, browser. I, I look at things from three different browsers if there's an issue with something or if I have a question. I always clear all caches. I clear uh, browser history if I'm going to do that too. Um, or I'll go to one that I haven't, you know, a cleared one, reset, restarted, and all that too. So we've always got, a, you know, a couple extra laptops not running. Um, that's when I did uh, find a Dell keyboard there with the old logo. Sold for almost 300 in less than 24 hours. Yeah, older computer stuff does does do fairly well. I do grab up most of that stuff. I've got an old Apple. Um, it's, it's the second version, the second Apple home computer, I think. One of the old um, five and three quarter or five and a quarter inch um, floppy drives I got the other day. I do very, very well. I know somebody who's got a whole Apple set up, a 2E setting that runs perfectly, and he's got everything for it. Um, I know they're not worth a fortune, but I still think it's neat because I remember when they first came out how amazed I was with the green textual screens and all that kind of stuff. Um, Spark 63, prices in thrift stores starting to become excessive. Yes, I would fully agree there. Yeah, let me know on that, Michelle. I am interested in hearing what, what comes with that. Again, I'll, I'll try and remember to look first thing in the morning for you. I don't think a, a day is going to affect it. They're either gone or they're not, I, would be my take. Um, I do have a VPN, though, just FYI, but you can turn those off. Uh, Gina Petri, I decided to start using eBay and watched about 30 of readers. I listed my first items a week ago and had two sales, but they tried to get me to text them and I wouldn't and they never paid. Yeah, anybody who tries to get you text is a scam. Is a scam. I've heard that from dozens of people. So what it sounds like is if you've got a new account, somebody has a app that will go through eBay. I don't know if eBay is aware, but this is my opinion. I, I've thought about this because we t I, I, I have a safety plus and a net plus cert. Um, just FYI, if you know what that is, A plus. I have an A plus cert. Um, we studied that kind of stuff. So what? What basically somebody has a bot goes and looks for new people who just list stuff, tries to get them to do the text because then they're going to try and get you to do information. They're going to try and steal. St it, it's it's a scam. Everybody who gets those, it, it's usually newer when I see it. I I don't get stuff like that these days. I think they're smart enough to only go after ones or they're a logarithm for their their bot says, hey, only hit the ones that are new with 0 to 20 feedback or 0 to 50 feedback. That's easy to do. I could do that in a Visual Basics, PHP, and a whole bunch. It's, it's an easy process to set up. Um, that would be my personal take on that. And yes, that does seem to happen quite often. Yeah, here's Kelly. Now, Kelly's stre stressing something that is true again. Um, there are sellers who have less than 1,000 items in stock but do far more than those people who have 10, 20,000, etc. That's true. 
I know somebody who has about 100 items who does more than I do. They're replenishables, though, so that's like a big difference. Um, if you can get high-end, there's people who do high-end clothing. They, they have the sources uh, or they have the, the purchase ability straight from the companies and, sell, and stuff themselves. And they'll sell like a $5,000 purse, you know, three or four times a week. The profits from that alone might make them, you know, $10,000 a week. You know, so that that's the point on that. It, it just depends on what you're selling. But for the most part, those are those are few and far between, like 0.5%. Half of 1% of people may be in those ranges. For the most part, it doesn't work that way. Uh, most everybody I know, to get the sales and have routine sales where I can count on that amount of money coming in all the time, I have to have a lot of items. It, it, but again, I've, I've started off from ground zero just like everybody else. We've went to the stage where I had 100 items or 1,000. We tried to always list the best stuff. No matter how long it took to list, we'd list everything, the high-dollar stuff, and we still weren't making the, the, the growing that we are these days until we hit the quantity. And then I don't worry as much with the quantity. I don't have to worry about sourcing $100 items anymore or $1,000 items every time I go out. I still find those, those type of stuff. $100 items are very easy now. $1,000 items are pretty tough, but the point of it is it's our bread and butter what makes us the majority of all of our money are like 20 or 25 dollar items we just sell so many of them you know and in the and like with um some of the other platforms and stuff we do i have you know multiple sales to the same person and and so it, it it's like a 150 dollar sale or a 200 dollar sale even if it's four or five items i'm still only wrapping up one package you know, it, I'm selling in bulk is, is is an easy explanation for it that way. I buy in bulk so I get them the cheapest possible. I can buy a huge assortment of things, sell only a couple items, get all my money back, and then I'm sitting on all this inventory for free. That's the whole point on, on the model. Again, I couldn't do that when I first started off. I don't compare myself to someone doing better, better than me either. And there are people that I know personally that are doing far better than me. It doesn't bother me at all that they're doing better. They work just as hard. They just... They, they've got the, the niche, they've got the knack for this or that, you know, like sports, sports. I know a sports guy that I, I talk to quite often. I don't know sports enough to do what he does, and I don't want to learn. I, I'm not interested in sports enough, even though I know he makes a lot of money, like packs and all that stuff. I, it's just not my thing. I'm not passionate about it. i got to be into it to want to invest my time into it. So I'll never be a sports person. Tools, all the tools around here. Uh, there's the the old timers get all the tools. I'll never get a deal on tools. I'll never be the first one on the tools because they all have some secret deal with everybody. It seems in my local area who's a business who would have anything for resale value. So I can't. There's things that I'll, I'll never even worry about. You know, like the snap on around here. They fight over that stuff. I'm not interested. I don't care to fight. I don't care to get in any confrontation in public. It's not worth my hassle. Again, I'm simpleton, easy stuff is the best. Don't stress yourself out. I'm working a lot of hours, but I'm not stressed out at all. Because if I want to take a break and get a bowl of ice cream, sit on the back porch and look down on the animals or watch the birds or the squirrels and all the animals out there, I, I can do that. I, I can do it anytime I want. You know, I don't smoke, but I can go out and take a break anytime I want, and I don't have to ask anybody, and it's it's me. If I want to sit outside and list and, and you know, underneath one of the umbrellas we got out there under the, the, the uh, screen, I can do whatever I want. I guess that's the biggest factor, and that's why I'm so motivated to keep doing this. Oh, let's see where we're at. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, uh, Michelle's saying the same thing to Gina. Once you make some sales and get some feedback, I really think that there's a feedback amount that they go after. If you've got less than an amount... It says, hey, this is one of the ones, then this, the bottle hit those stores first. That's what I see. I mean, when you first start, here's, here's a good example. When you get your business license, you go down to the county county clerks or tax assessor, whoever does it in your area, um, you're going to get a call, email, or some contact information, real mail or a packet sitting up front of your door from accountants. Because when you get a business license around here, that information, you can go down and buy a list of all the people who just got a business license as a, you know, and then I can use that list and market to all those people. They allow that. The city makes money off of that. You know, so you can always tell who's new in certain areas. That's why, again, with eBay, there's just a bot, I'm sure, that does that. They should be able to get it out of the way and fix that, but... Um, 
Yeah, Douglas, I wished eBay was always helpful, but I've, I've had many cases where eBay just blames the seller for it, to me personally even, telling me I don't know what I'm talking about and all this stuff. Um, you should end this live with a sentimental motivational speech, your own personal theories on discipline. Yeah, I don't mind the tedious stuff, but there isn't much tedious stuff anymore for us. I guess that's the biggest point. The longer you do this, for you, Antoinette, the longer you do this, the less amount of tedious stuff you'll have. The most tedious stuff I have is downloading a report, auto-summing the column, and then uh, linking it to somewhere else in a workbook. That's the most tedious stuff I do, and it takes moments. And you can download a month's worth of data all at once and just link a couple of boxes. That's the most tedious stuff I have to do. Everything else is just a quick download. I had to produce sales taxes due every six months. So I, I had to turn in sales tax. I think the deadline was yesterday. Um, so, I mean, that's the most complicated thing I've had to do all week. And that's nothing. I just had to run a sales report January 1st till the last day of June. You know, just to make sure sales tax was all filed up and everything. And I just had to do it for all the platforms around. Most of the sites collect sales tax, and when they don't, it, anyway, I'm not going to go into how we do taxes. That's probably not going to help somebody who's not in my state. But Yeah, I will end it with some, some re reassuring words. Ohioan as well. Well, I do like Ohio fairly well. Stunlaw, when, how are you doing? I actually did sell my first item last night and have already shipped it. I was thankful. Thank you for the encouragement. Well, thank thank you for your support as well. Let's one more time. If you're enjoying the conversation, I got 187 people in house, 132 thumbs up. Please slam the thumbs up there. Give some love to the channel. Let, let's edit here because we're. I really wanted to end it a little sooner. I know I yap too long, and I keep trying to keep myself to my own schedule on the live shows. I kind of don't pay as much attention to it, but let, let's just give you some motivation, as uh, Antoinette has said out there. Um, one thing I can tell you is if you don't give up, and again, I don't give up. I bugged Amazon until till they were probably tired of hearing from me to get on gated and collectibles. I don't give up. I keep going at it. If uh, we lived on ramen noodles with the kids eating everything good and the wife and I really scraping the barrel for food-wise for a little while there, but we did it. And I wasn't going to give up no matter what it took. We were going to go broke. We invested everything we had into buying the cameras and all the other junk. We were either going to make it or we were going to go broke. You know, and I didn't want to go broke, so I worked religiously over, I mean, as much time, as much effort as I could put into this, because I knew what I wanted out of it. The, the one thing that you should want out of this, and the most important thing that you should want, again, out of this as a reseller, is freedom. I, I swear to you, to me, that's the most important factor. I would rather make far less money and have my own freedom to do what I want, when I want, than, than be a millionaire because I don't I don't the, the money the quantity the, the aspect of being called a millionaire means nothing to me I don't care about that I would rather have the freedom to go to the park or take the dog for a walk or take the wife to dinner or the kids to a movie and, and stuff like that that's what I'd rather be able to do than anything else in this world I worked for 20 years for another business I missed all the the first of my kids first steps first words all of that I worked 70 hours a week for somebody else, and I made like a tenth of what I do now. I mean, and I made really good money, I mean, for what it was, but, you know, happiness and freedom go hand in hand. I mean, if you're willing to do the work, again, this is not going to be easy. It's a lot of work. It's very hard work to to get this to a stage where, where I'm at or some other big YouTuber is at, it's, it's, or some reseller in general. Uh, it, it, it's a big step. I know where I was 15 or 20 years ago, and I would have never dreamt I could even be in this spot. You know, but again, I, I never gave up. I never stopped doing it. I never let the fact that other people were more successful than me who were doing the same thing, I never worried about that. Everybody has their own pace. Everybody has their own knowledge base. Everybody has the same basic opportunities in this, doing this. You don't have to be the most eloquent looks i'm not the best looking person in the world that that means nothing in this everybody is equal playing field because no one knows you when they're buying from you anywhere online you have to put yourself out there from the know you if that's what you want but no one has to be anything different or, than the who they really are because it's, it's a level playing field your name is is you know arbitrary it doesn't mean much 
when you create a store name as to who you are. They're looking at you as a store. They're not looking at you as a person. So everybody has the same opportunities to the most extent. Whether you have the same opportunities, you've got to take advantage of that aspect of it. You can't just slack off. You've got to understand that when you first start off, you're going to put more time in than you've ever have in your life working for anybody else. It's going to cost you more time, more effort. If you can get past that, you can see where you want to go with this, the, your future, your, your goals, you're going to get there. Motivation is the biggest, biggest driving factor for me. The motivation not to work for somebody and the fact that I've got my freedom. Something that's still, I wake up in the middle of the night and think, well, man, I can't believe I don't have to be somewhere. I've, I used to have the worst hours. I'd have to be at work at sometimes 2, 3 in the morning. I'd work 10 at night till 10 in the morning. And now it's all my own life. That's all this is to me. I, I swear that's, that's it. It's the freedom to be with my family and do what I want when I want. Yeah, money's good and all and, and stuff, but I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't care about the millionaire aspect. It means nothing. You know, it, uh, would I be able to spend all that money in my lifetime even if I did, you know? I'd rather just be happy and enjoy myself and have freedom. And if that's you, you're willing to do what it takes to get to that spot where you have that freedom, then you're going to succeed at this. If you can control your own destiny, control your own hours effectively, not just blow your time and watch movies and think you're going to get it done or only think you need to do four hours. You're never going to make it thinking you only have to do four hours. I don't care if Joe Schmo says that you only have to do four hours. If you're just starting off, you need to really sink it down. I'd rather do all the extra time now as opposed to waiting 10 years from now when I'm much older and may not be able to do that time. I need to invest it in now, get it as big and as, as good as I can now well, I've got the ability. So that's why I'm sinking it in. I know what happens in 10 years. I know what my goals are for 10 years. Set yourself some goals and go with it. That would be my best recommendation for this. Again, if, if you want to invest, you want to learn, you don't get discouraged. You're not going to give up. You're going to get there. There's are some, there are some folks here in the feed tonight. And I can, I'm not going to mention any names, but there's at least two in the feed tonight that, that are in here that I know from three or four years ago when I first started doing YouTube videos that have now made it. They've hit a level where they've got enough coming in, they're paying their bills, they're putting money aside finally. It took us three years. It took us three years to get to a point where we were comfortable and, and I didn't have to worry. We used to have to count how much at the grocery store, and again, I didn't have a cell phone back then because we didn't even have the money for that, but uh, we'd have to count how much money we had in the cart at the grocery store because we only had 80 bucks for that shopping trip. I've been there. I've done that. You know, so it's got to get the cheapo bread. You got to get the cheapo noodles, a big jug of spaghetti sauce or whatever. I've done that. You know, nowadays I don't have to, and only because I've worked my butt off and I've earned. I, I swear I've earned every damn dime that I have right now. It's all us. Nobody's helped us. No one's done anything to to get us here. It's it's dedication. It's it's obsession with what I do. It's the fact that I'm passionate about this and I'm I'm overjoyed to get up in the morning knowing that something new, something cool is going to hopefully come in that I can look at and enjoy. Uh, old toys are always great for me. But we're going to end it off on there. If you haven't slammed that thumbs up, please slam that thumbs up. Show some love for the channel. Tomorrow's video is another top 20 video. We're going to show you something pretty interesting, pretty unique. Pretty interesting would be the key one there, but it should be a little eye-opener for folks. They're true sales, just like every item I show in a sold video is something that I actually sold. So anyway, we're going to let you go, and I do appreciate everybody coming out again. Thumbs up if you enjoyed the conversation.